Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Today, and we are back with three space updates for you. Firstly, we will talk about SpaceX's upcoming plans with its giant armed robot chopsticks, Mechazilla. After this, we will discuss about Dragon Cargo's docking, and finally we will uncover the update regarding Musk's companies reaching nearly 110,000 employees worldwide. Let us start with SpaceX updates on giant armed robot chopsticks, Mechazilla. SpaceX is about to accomplish something extraordinary real soon. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk tweeted, SpaceX will try to catch largest ever flying object with robot chopsticks. The name coined for these robot chopsticks is actually Mechazilla. The workers finally installed a 145 meter tall tower, and this tower is forming the backbone for other massive arms which will actually work as chopsticks. It will supposedly catch SpaceX's very own starships and super heavy boosters. From the end of June, welders were working on the metal fittings and finally, two months later, SpaceX has installed first three arms to Mechazilla. The tower contains a quick disconnect swing arm and is designed to accomplish a number of tasks. It will hold a connector attached to Starship's base temporarily. Its purpose is to load Starship with required consumables and also link them with the ground power. Starship and Super Heavy boosters were planned to be connected to umbilical panels and sit on a mount which will be placed beside the tower. However, this time this idea seemed to be discarded. Later, SpaceX CEO revealed about the company's plans to dock Starships aft to aft. He also mentioned his plans to offload as many vessels on launch pad as possible. The team, as we know, is planning to help the world's largest rockets to land safely without facing any damage. Musk said, success is not guaranteed, but excitement is. The team is still working on some version of Mechazilla such that it can turn around SpaceX vessels irrespective of weather conditions. They are looking forward to check if the second attempt at catching rockets remains as successful as the first one. Once catching operation succeeds, the company will further work on its long-sighted plan of reusing Starship and thus accomplish its further bigger aim. This development is significant in the history of Starship. Without the giant booster, the vessel is incapable of escaping the Earth's pull. However, now we might soon encounter the first super heavy flight. After Starship launched Mechazilla's first arms, Elon Musk revealed his plans to fully expend Starship and super heavy booster pair in a May 2021 FCC filings. The company wants to launch the first two stage Starship to a height of 200 to 300 kilometers. The vessel will separate for some time after liftoff. It will flip around and boost back towards South Texas. Then will land 20 miles offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. Depending on the landing event, further attempts of catching a next vessel will be made on Super Heavy Booster's next launch. Based on the FCC application mentioned earlier, it can be inferred that Starship will stop just short of true orbit. It will then travel slowly such that it can re-enter the atmosphere. The company doesn't want it to deorbital burn. If Starship fails, it will be floating. The trajectory design will likely prevent a Russian roulette scenario. Situations with Super Heavy Booster are, however, better and simpler. Thus, for reducing risks, SpaceX wants to completely expend the first Super Heavy Booster and also 29 Raptor engines. They would not attempt to land the booster or any of its engines at land or sea platform. This is because Musk has tried to prevent installation completely and also because of the design of the legs. This might end up being SpaceX CEOs and other taken chances that will dispense of more than five years of experience landing just to attempt to catch the vessel with Mechazilla's massive arms. Irrespective of the new methods, Super Heavy will even this time have to follow the same steps of boosting back to land, coast and fire up Raptor engines to finally land. Just this time, it will land on the major moving arms. Even if this turns out to be a potential alternative, the long-term benefit is very less reduction of the vessel's dry mass. Musk, however, sounds quite confident regarding his new project, Mechazilla. According to him, this will soon prove to be a better recovery approach and then attempt to catch Super Heavy Booster 5. But that test stands on the grounds of FAA approval and also accurate landing of Booster 4. Minor discomforts while attempting the giant arm methods can lead to drastic damages to various important parts which will take months to be repaired.
However, now nothing can be predicted about Starship 20 and Super Heavy B-4's orbital launch debut because it lies in FAA's hands. But no matter how much time the official proceedings take, SpaceX is set for Starship's launch and Mechazilla's testing. Now we'll look forward to SpaceX's Dragon cargo update, which has docked back after its recent voyage. We've heard of various unique birthday gifts, but no one ever expects something as magnificent as SpaceX's Dragon cargo shift. NASA astronaut Megan MacArthur experienced something similar to this unbelievable event. On the 30th of August, the Dragon arrived at the International Space Station. It reached with experimental goods and equipment just in time for the astronomer's birthday. Her reaction to this was warm. She radioed Mission Control saying, Congratulations to NASA and SpaceX teams and many thanks. No one's ever sent me a spaceship for my birthday before. After a 32-hour orbital chase, Dragon docked the station's Harmony module at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 14.30 Greenwich Mean Time. They sailed 264 miles above Western Australia at the moment. The Dragon is packed with heavy supplies and scientific experiments. About an experiment named Gitai S1 Robotic Arm Tech Demo, the team members wrote, this investigation supports development of robots to support crew intravehicular activities and eventually extravehicular activities. Space robotics also could support on-orbit servicing, assembly and manufacturing tasks, lowering the cost of such tasks and contributing to increased commercial activity in space. There are now two Dragons at the International Space Station. One of them brought NASA astronauts MacArthur and Shane Kimbrough Thomas Pesquet from the European Space Agency, and Japanese space flyer Akihito Hoshide. These astronauts will probably be back to Earth in November, and their crew members Mark van de Heij, Pyotr Dubrov, and Oleg Novitsky will continue the mission abroad. Before wrapping up, we'll take a look at Elon Musk's companies have crossed the mark of 110,000 employees all over the world. Elon Musk, SpaceX, and Tesla are becoming part of regular talk. As far as with developments of space and car technology, Musk's companies have provided large employment all over the world. Musk's companies have already crossed the milestone of 100,000 employees. And in a recent update from Musk, which states that he has nearly 110,000 employees working in his companies all over the world. On the 30th of August, Sam Twitz wrote to Musk, Elon, just a quickie. How many people work for your companies worldwide now? Has it reached 100,000? Thanks. Musk replied, about 110K. From this, it's quite remarkable that Tesla, SpaceX, and other companies of Musk are providing quite a good job facility in their growth phase. And in the times to come, it can be strongly expected this job facility will have a good boost up when SpaceX's Starbase is complete and Musk's other companies reach a veteran stage. According to some reports, the numbers of employees at present revealed by Musk are the ones with whom the companies have direct connection, whom the companies have directly hired. But there are several other workers who have indirect connection to the companies. If we take them into account, then the number will be astonishing. If we talk about Musk's car-making company, Tesla, they've already planned to establish two electric vehicle production facilities in Texas and Europe. According to some report, Tesla is yet to initiate preparatory works for these factories. Once these two factories are successfully established, they'll rapidly increase the employee count. Musk's company will add several thousands of employees more to boost up car production, specifically in late 2021 when production of Model Y will be initiated in the Giga Texas and Giga Factory Berlin. Tesla will also add dedicated workers for their own battery cell plants to be used for making batteries for EV cars. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.